Hello, people. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the murders in Idaho of the four students in Moscow, out Idaho. And it was at um, Idaho University they went to. And it's. Um, I want to talk about the update and what they're saying now and why I disagree with quite a bit of stuff and who I think actually did the killing. And also, uh, I'm going to introduce a profile done by an FBI agent of the killer. There's been a lot of things said, and these poor kids, they're out to two o'clock in the morning, then they're coming home. And uh, just so you know, they were Kaylee Gunkovs, uh, uh, Madison Mojan, Zena Kernoodle, and Ethan Chapman. And now this is a very strange murder because there was a lot of blood at the scene. It, it was just a horrible scene. There was two other people sleeping in a house and a dog. The dog was not touched, and two other people on a different floor of the house, they were not touched. The four people that were out that night came home and eventually was murdered. A lot of people are saying, why was uh, there no, uh, why didn't the other students hear them when the fighting was going on? First of all, you got to remember, there's four people coming home, and they've all been out drinking at 2 o'clock in the morning. So when they're laying down to go to sleep, they're not going to be like they would regularly be. They're going to be kind of sleepy. They're going to fall to sleep. And by the time this murderer got to them uh, and plunged the knives into them, he killed them. I'm guessing that the first person that he probably took out was the guy. Uh, and uh, let me tell you why. Because you figure right here, this Ethan Chapman, he's a healthy kid. He's strong. Stabbings don't usually kill people right away unless you use something like this. And this is what they're saying that he's using, a kabar knife. Uh, what I find strange about that is why they would release that information about what the weapon is. But let's remember, this little town, Moscow, they didn't have a murder in seven years, people. Seven years. So the chances are they went in there and contaminated the hell out of the scene. You had two people that found the bodies in the morning. That contaminated the, the scene. You had a dog walking around also. So everything was contaminated. Uh, and then you had uh, a disorganized police department that just was not used to these kind of murders. And what they should have done is they should have locked the door once they knew the people in there were dead. And they should have called the state police who would have uh, right away brought in some type of forensic team or got a hold of uh, the FBI. But that was delayed. So there was a lot of stuff that was going on and that it should not have been going in. Uh, when you're not experienced, you shouldn't be dealing with that kind of murder scene. But they chose to. And that's a more of a pride thing. And when they realized how bad it is, then they contact the FBI. But contamination by that time probably went everywhere. Uh, and it's very interesting that they released, they released this picture. Why would they release the picture of the murder weapon? I mean, you could see that if maybe that is the murder weapon and look at the size of the knife. If they plunged it into somebody, it would definitely kill them. But there was a lot of things going on in this town of Moscow. It was very weird. Uh, first of all, a month before this murder happened, there was a 12 year old dog that went out like it did every day, disappeared. And unfortunately, I don't like to put up a picture with a dog. It's a sad story, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, this dog was 12 years old. His name was Buddy. And he disappeared. And then they found him in the woods. And this is near the same area of where this house uh, was. They found him in the woods. And um, he was basically had his fur taken off of him. He was a uh, scalp too. Uh, it was a very, very hor uh, horrible scene to find your animal like that. But I bring that up because you have to remember that this happened. Everybody knew in the town that this happened with the dog. It was all over the place. Um, and it was scary. So here you find this dog. This didn't happen before. They find him in the woods and basically slaughtered and uh, the fur cut off of the dog. Um, and, you know, a lot of people make this comparison to Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy, he uh, attacked five women uh, at the Mega Sorority in Florida, and um, he killed two of them. And it was pretty much like this because it was at nighttime. Uh, and he surprised them while they were sleeping, and he used a, a large log and smashed them in the head. Two of the five died, 
and uh, two of the others were permanently injured for life. Um, but eventually he was caught right after this. He was caught right after this murder and he was executed in the early 90s. And the brutality of that murder is but they got they, they right away. They had a suspect uh, and they found him driving in Lakeland in a, uh, in a uh, Volkswagen. He tried to fight the cop. They arrested him. So that those murders were solved, even though they didn't solve a lot of other ones. But the brutality of this murder was incredible. I mean, just take a look at this, people. OK, this is the side of the house. OK, you see this right here. This is the side of the house. There was so much blood in the house that it started spilling outside of the house. I mean, take a look at that. That is from the murder scene. That tells you how bad this murder was. That They were laying there for quite a while, murdered and bleeding until their, their roommates got up. I mean, it was a party night. They were all out. They were drinking. They were having a good time. And who would have ever thought? Now, these apartments, uh, they have alarms on them that have to be set. And when these and when these people got back to the apartment, the uh, the four kids, when they got back to the apartment that night, it was already uh, um, the alarm was on, the door wasn't left unlocked, uh, and so you figured the alarm's on, they have to go in the house. One of two things could have happened: either someone followed them in, but I find that hard to believe because if there's four people being forced in at knife point at the door, there's going to be a lot of action going on, a lot of fighting, a lot of noise. And it's already proven that these people were laying in bed when they were murdered. They were sleeping. So the killer had an opportunity to stab them. And uh, this is why I think they he went for the guy first. Take him out, and then you go for the women. And he probably took out the guy. I don't know if he was sleeping with one of the women uh, girls, but one of the girls was uh, his girlfriend. So I'm assuming so. So that would be the first two that he would take out. And then I'm thinking that maybe he was in the house already. Maybe he hid in the closet. Maybe he hid in another room. You got to remember, this was a large apartment that had a couple floors. And then he made his attacks. And uh, once he killed them, he left. He did not kill the dog, even though the dog was there and could have been murdered. But they, he did not kill the dog. He let the dog live. This sounds like a person that has some compassion for animals, but not human beings. And what made him do this killing? Uh, now, one of the girls, let me just show you this picture right here. If you look at Kaylee, Can Can I'm sorry, Gun Calvis. If you look at her, she had a stalker. She, she already reported the stalker following her. And they have investigated into this. But they also see, are seeing that this ties with the dog. And then on top of that, there were two other murders over the last few years, all within 400 miles of each other. Uh, you had Travis, I'm sorry, two other murders, Tra 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 I'm sorry, Travis and Jamil Jordan. Travis defended off the killer there, and but he died of his wounds and his wife lived. Then you have Sandra Ladd. She was murdered in her house and she was stabbed to death too. So in this vicinity, of uh, right across the reservation there, you've got three murders, uh, three murder scenes. I don't think that whoever murdered these uh, kids murdered those people, and here's why. Um, now, I don't know how, how uh, this gentleman right here, his name is Jim Clement. He's a retired FBI agent. He's a very famous profiler, and he's come up with a profile, and we'll talk about it. Uh, shortly, but we're going to talk about what his profile is and what he th who he thinks the killer is, and uh, his opinion. And I think his opinion makes a lot of sense when you really think about it. And you got to remember, this guy hunted serial killers for 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 decades, and he was very good at it and caught many. So, and this is the couple right here, beautiful people. I mean, young pe people in school, uh, three young girls, a young man. Uh, no criminal records. They always known as good kids, good students, and on top of that, they uh, had good futures. That one person wiped out, and this is the horror of murder. But this is what happened. It was wiped out. Um, so let's get back to the profile. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to read you the profile and why I think, and I'm going to read you this. This is from the New York Post. Let me put this up. Okay, and this is, uh, just so you do know, this is Jim Clement, the retired FBI agent, that's given what his profile is. The murder who ruthlessly slaughtered University of Idaho students is likely, this is his opinion, a younger man, first-time killer, profiler Jim Clemente said. I believe it's a first-time killer, too. Um, and I got a funny feeling they're going to find out that there was a triangle, a love triangle, or, or, or a stalker. I don't think this is a stalker. I think this is somebody that was very angry at one of the girls uh, because it was this group that they were angry at. This group was out that night at the bar. The other two girls weren't out. This person had no anger toward those other two people in the house, but had anger at all four of these people. I mean, the way he brutally murdered them. And it's, it, you know, it is definitely a guy because of the power uh, used uh, as for, it being more than one person, I think it's one person. Uh, this is an extremely risky crime for an offender unless he knows one or more victims and he's been stalking one of them. Going into uh, the occupied dwelling to, uh, with six adults, any of whom uh, could have a uh, knife or a gun or a cell phone to call the police is extremely, extremely risky unless you know the circumstances inside. Uh, the, F, uh, the former FBI profiler feels certain the killer is a man and pointed out he must be comfortable with blood to be able to fatally stab four people in quick succession and might be a hunter or work as a butcher. Now, remember, we're talking about a dog that was found uh, uh, skinned in the woods. And somebody that would do that would be used to that blood. I mean, maybe it was something that he did. He, usually a lot of these killers will kill animals before they kill people. Uh, he doesn't mind uh, wet work of getting his hands dirty and his professional will probably be the same thing. So we're, so he's saying that this guy is a layman, uh, layman type worker um, and that he's used to hard work and he may be a hunter Clemente said he believes it was a, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Police apparently described the knife-wielding killer as sloppy and said after the aftermath of the murder was the most gruesome scene they had witnessed. Well, of course it's the most gruesome scene. There was a murder in this town for seven years. When these cops went in to see this murder, they had to be stunned. You're talking policemen that have never seen a crime scene like this before. The original cops that entered this house had never seen a crime scene like this before. They knew very little about contamination. And they're going from room to room seeing this horrible thing in these beds, these children laying there, these young kids laying there dead and slaughtered. So can you imagine what went through those cops' minds? The fact that they waited so long to call the FBI or the state police, it's kind of strange. I, I think they should have done it a little bit quicker. Uh, like I said, lock the door, walk, not, just close the door, walk out, call the FBI or the state police and get them there right away. Um, but this is what happens. Jurisdictions don't like to give up uh, certain crimes to other jurisdictions. I don't think he's an experienced killer. I, I don't think this guy's done this before, Clement said, adding that the stabber may have been motivated by revenge, rejection or some kind of insult. It could have been an insult at the bar that night. Uh, and he went back to the house and somehow got in to a window, maybe, even though the pad with the front door is locked, it could have been a window unlocked. You got six kids living there. I'm, I'm sorry, six students living there. Can they have a window open? Sure. On top of that, it's, uh, you know, it's still uh, pretty cool that night. I feel the subject may be an unsophisticated person because the crime was apparently massive. He told the Post, going into the occupied home where there were six people in different rooms in the middle of the night is pretty dangerous. Police in Moscow, Idaho, have yet to name a suspect and have provided conflicting stories of what could have happened before the murder. They even were unable to confirm reports uh, that gone calves, the one of this young lady right here, they can't still, still they can't uh, say whether she was being stalked or not. You figure... Uh, 
the college had reports and stuff that they would have their reports too. Okay. The investigators have looked extensively into information they received from Kaylee Guncalves having a stalker. The Moscow PD said an update on, on the investigation on Tuesday. They have pursued hundreds of pieces of information related to this topic and have not been able to verify or identify a stalker. Clement thinks authorities have a lot of work in, working against them because of the addition to the offender likely fleeing town after the killing and getting nine hours head start before the alarm was raised. Students also followed suit out of fear or for the Thanksgiving break. Now, let's say this was um, a murder where, it, say it was a student there. It's Thanksgiving. That student's going to leave town and go home for Thanksgiving. May have that planned. Uh, if it, who knows if it's a student? I have no idea. I can't. I don't think it's a student, um, but I think it's someone that knew them or someone that um, uh, had some type of intervention with them. Uh, that's the big problem, he said, because potential suspects and witnesses are now gone. Still, locals should be on the lookout for people who stop coming to work following the murders or change their behaviors drastically. Somebody in this community knows him. This is what the FBI profile are saying. So somebody knows that person. Um, it's a very interesting case. It's a, it's a very sad story. I mean, you've got parents that are devastated. Right before the holidays, their kids were making plans with them to come home and spend time with them. These kids were not, there's no, uh, there's nothing that shows that they were involved with any type of drugs, drugs being sold. And you know, that first 48 hour period is very important to find the killer. And they haven't done that either. Do I think they're gonna catch him? Yes. I believe that at this time they have an idea who it is, but they can't prove it. And they're trying to put a case together. Um, you kill that many people in a house with blood leaking out of the sides of the house. The killer had to have blood on him when he left the house. Um, when you use a knife to attack people, a lot of times the killer will cut his own hand. Uh, and let's take a look one more time at this knife. Look how big that knife is, people. If you plunge that into someone's kidney, liver, or heart, they're going to die right away. Um, I have not seen any uh, autopsy reports that says how many times they were stabbed. Uh, we didn't see uh, any autopsy report to say how drunk they were. Were the kids totally drunk? I mean, they're out partying. They're, they're college kids, and they're getting ready to go home for the holidays. So this is like their last time out. So you, you figure the kids had a good amount of drinks in them. And where the boy it was, the guy and the girl, they were a couple. But were they in separate rooms or the same room in the same bed? These are things we don't know yet. And they will be releasing that. But I'm just dumbfounded that they would release what the murder weapon was. So they got to have something else besides that knife. Uh, you figure with that much blood on the floor or ground, you're going to get footprints, sneaker prints, some type of uh, something on the floor that's going to give that killer away. Um, so why don't you tell me what you think down below? If you... Uh, like this video, please uh, please hit the like button. If you haven't subbed to this channel, please sub. I'm going to do more updates on this murder. I don't usually get a lot of uh, views with this and stuff, but I find this stuff fascinating, uh, sad. But with this, there's so many scenarios between the dog, so cute, uh, it's a sh and the other murders in the area that happened over a certain period of time. For as reasons why they would try to see if these are tied together. You don't hear about this in the media right now. They're going to basically tell you what they want. But these four kids right here, and I call them kids because I'm an older person, they had their whole lives against uh, going for them. Beautiful young people, and they're gone now because of something happened in that house. And I think that we're going to get more surprises when um, they find out who did this. I'm hoping that the police held things back, um, but I'm having a funny feeling that the Moscow Police Department may have messed up some stuff on this, 
and now the FBI are is they're, they pretty much are going to have to work through their mistakes. So let's see what happens. I'm I'm, I'm sensing there's going to be an arrest coming pretty soon. I'll be very surprised if there's not an arrest within the next seven to ten days. I predict an arrest. Maybe I'll be wrong, but that's what I'm predicting. Okay, people, sub, uh, like this video, um, and leave me your opinions below. Take care.